Hi, thanks for watching. Uh, let's just jump right into it on this channel. I'm going to be documenting building a custom 50 by 60 hanger home. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to try and summarize about six months worth of planning and design. Uh, so we have been planning on building this hangar home since about January of this year. That's when we bought the lot we're going to be building it on. And uh, it's taken a ton of effort to get us to where we are right now. And where we are right now is the metal building builder is planning on breaking ground, doing the dirt work, uh, roughing in the plumbing, and pouring the slab next week. So this episode is going to be kind of a computer intensive episode of me just sitting here on a computer screen, but uh, subsequent episodes are going to be more me hands on finishing out the inside. So the plan is we're having a builder uh, erect the building and uh, do the water well and the septic. And then after that, I'm essentially going to take over and finish out all the living space myself. So as a little background, my wife and I are originally from Dallas, Texas, but we had moved to Alabama a couple years back uh, for her work. Now, in a little less than a year from now, we're moving back to Texas, um, and I have somehow convinced my wife to let us live in a 50 by 60 airplane hangar. Uh, the plan wasn't always to live in a hangar. It was actually to build a barnuminium. And if you don't know what a barnuminium is, a barnuminium is essentially a metal barn or a post frame barn that you then finish out the inside just like you would a normal living space. So how did we land on wanting to build a barnuminium? Well, my wife got a job in Amarillo. And I don't know if you've ever been to Amarillo, but once you get outside the city limits, it's essentially flat farm ranch land. Uh, the people there are absolutely wonderful, extremely nice. It's a relatively low cost to live in area. Um, the, the Canyon School Districts are really good school districts. We're really excited about moving there. There's a lot of positives about moving there, and we wanted to take advantage of it being a more rural environment than me and my wife have ever lived in before, and we wanted to build something that you couldn't get away with inside of city limits, like in a Dallas or Birmingham, Alabama, something like that. So we have decided, we had decided that we were going to try and build a barnuminium. So how, what did we do from there once we knew we were going to build a barnuminium? Well, the first thing that we did was we visited Amarillo and we, and we drove around and we looked at houses for sale. The idea behind this was we were trying to get a baseline, right? And the baseline, as we figured out, is that in Amarillo, you could buy a 1,500 to 1,800 square foot house with a 1,200 foot square foot detached shop for around $300,000. So that is a, a conventional, conservative, very good option, and that's how we set our budget. We wanted to be able to build our barnuminium for less than $300,000 because if we couldn't, then it just makes more sense to just go buy a house, you know? So that was that's our goal behind this build. The other difficulty behind this build is we're trying to pay for it all out of pocket. Um, so, because I can't get a construction loan doing as much of the work myself as I plan on doing it because I am not a general contractor. Uh, and we have a lot of money tied up in our Alabama house at the, at the moment. So we're essentially going to be, once we saved up enough money to build the metal building, I'm essentially going to finish out the inside of it paycheck to paycheck. As I get paid, I'll buy more materials and use them up. That's kind of the plan moving forward. So, so once we had driven around and we kind of see what there was to offer in Amarillo, and we got our baseline, uh, we we were we decided to look around for lots that we could build a barnuminium on. So, uh, we were looking at lots that had essentially two criteria. It had to be close enough to where my wife works that she didn't have a crazy commute every day, and they had to have essentially no building restrictions that let us that would let us build a barnuminium on the lot. And surprisingly enough, there was not a lot of options out there. The housing market in Amarillo is just blowing up, or, or at least it was about a year ago when we were looking looking at all this stuff. Um, what's, what's going on is builders are going in and they're gobbling up all the farmland that's right outside the city limits. So they're buying up these you know, 20, 30 acre, acre parcels and then they're subdividing it up and they're building houses and they're turning them into subdivisions. So if you look at buying a lot, it, almost all of them are in a subdivision, and the subdivisions all had crazy restrictions. You know, it had to be 2,000 square foot plus living space with a two car attached garage, 
and 80% of the exterior had to be brick and no metal, not even a metal roof, right? So it was really, really tough to find a lot that would let us build a Bartiminium on. So what we were doing is we found ourselves, we were pushing further and further and further outside of the city limits, looking for lots until we got to the point where it was, uh, it was just too far a commute for me to ask my wife to, to drive every day. You know, there's no reason for her to have to drive 45 minutes to and from work when we can buy, you know, a house with a detached shop much closer to city to the city. Um, so we had actually kind of, kind of given up for a little bit on building the Barnuminium. And I was driving down the highway, and off to one side, I actually saw what looked like just a whole bunch of metal buildings all stacked up in a row. So I pulled off the highway and, and drove up to them, and what it actually ended up being is it ended up being an airport. And this is a picture of that airport, but it's it's really old. Now on either side of the runway, you have these two taxiways, and on both sides of the taxiways, it's essentially just lined up with hangars. And as I was uh, driving and looking at some of these hangars, there were some just absolutely gorgeous hangar homes built on this runway. Uh, very expensive, but you know, very, very nice hangar homes that were for sale, or the current not for sale, just currently would be in lived in. Um, and I was thinking, man, so a hangar home essentially is a bar it, it 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 ticks all the right boxes. The only difference is one of the end walls has a hangar door that opens up so that you have an entire, you know, you have a 40, 42 foot opening on one side of your shop, right? Not a bad deal. Great ventilation, allowing way to move air through. Pretty, pretty cool idea. So driving around, uh, I saw a for sale by owner lot and I called them up and we talked and I called around and talked to some different people at the airport and we ended up buying this lot. Uh, so now we bought the lot and flash forward six months later, we have uh, this plan. So th this is the planned Barnuminium that we have designed, hangar home that we've designed with it placed on the lot and this is what we're, we're trying to build. Um, so we bought this lot, like I said, back in January of this year and it took a solid six months of, of pretty hard work, hours and hours and hours, sitting on a computer, drawing up floor plans, different designs, working with my wife to try and get something that would make us both happy, and we finally landed on, on this design. So um, I'm gonna walk you through the design process that, that we used to get here and some of the learnings that, that we have along the way. I do want to admit to you that I am not a builder, um, I have never built a brand new home. So what I have done is I have remodeled, done pretty extensive remodel jobs to homes in the past. And I have built additions on to homes. So I essentially built garages and stuff that, that, that then, then attach to an existing structure. But I have never built an entire house from the ground up. In this instance, I'm still not. Like I said, the exterior shell is gonna be built by a builder, but I have never done all of the the complete finish out work for an interior. I have done most of it piecemeal. I've done plumbing here, electrical there, but I've never done the whole structure by myself. So this this channel is gonna be a growing experience for me. I will try my best to share my learnings with you because I will make mistakes. I will certainly make mistakes and, uh, and I will try and document those as best I can. But if, if you see something that I have done wrong, uh, leave a comment in the video. Let, let me know, right? So let me, because like I said, I am not an expert. And if I made a mistake, it's probably that I made a mistake and I just didn't know better, right? So, so thanks for watching. Um, let me know what you think. From here, we're going to jump right into it and we're going to walk through some of the, uh, the kind of the how we picked the size and the floor plan layout. Right all right, guys, I was cutting this video together and it actually ended up being quite a bit longer than I anticipated. I didn't realize I was going to go on a 10 minute monologue. So I am actually going to release the floor plan that we designed as long as with kind of the building restrictions and, and all the different floor plans that we came up with along the way uh, in the next video. So go ahead and check back when I release the next video. I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you next time.